our people. Um, a more honest approach. Hi, Mr. Mack. Uh, I'm here to interview you about, about generally just your life, but I want, I want to get to know you. So the first question is, how long have you been teaching? Well, I've been teaching high school for, I think this is my 17th year. I taught one year at Cal State Fullerton, and then I served for a couple of years. So what subjects do you teach uh, in high school? Math. Just math? <laughs> All the math. I've taught Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, Tree Pre-Calc, and now I'm teaching Statistics. Currently, I'm teaching geometry and statistics. What do you like most about your job? Messing with the kids. Just messing with the you kids. You guys are so much fun. Well, let's get something straight. I teach math, and I personally believe that math is everything, and everything is math. I believe that. And I'm not. I don't just say that. It's not self-aggrandizement. It is about the subject. Math is incredibly important. If you want to understand anything in life, you have to understand the math of it. Whatever it is you're talking about, math. It can explain it. And the better you understand the math, the better you understand the topic. Statistics, I believe, is probably the most important course or the most useful course a student will take beyond the ability to read and write and do basic arithmetic. Statistics, you can't do anything without statistics. The clothes you wear were determined by statistics. Whether or not you get medication is determined by statistics. The people we elect in Congress are determined by statistics. The policies that we enact are determined by statistics. Everything is determined by statistics. So I believe in what I do. I truly believe in what I do. I think what I do is important, but the reason I do it is because it's fun. <laughs> okay, let's talk more about you. Um, what sets you apart from, from other people? Um, I'm more honest than most, which sounds like a good thing, but in fact is probably not, mm -hmm. because I tend to tell people things they don't want to hear. I talk a lot. I am really willing to share my opinion with anyone. The fact is that people say, oh, you're so opinionated. I'm not any more or less opinionated than anyone else. Everybody has opinions. I just am more willing to share them, and I am probably have thought about that more than most. I overthink most things. So when I tell you I think something or I believe something or I know something, it is because I've spent a ton of time thinking about it. And most people probably don't. So it's mostly I'm just, I've thought about things a lot more than most people do, and I talk about them a lot more than most okay. people do. So you seem like an argumentative person, and a lot of people think you are. Um, so how is it that, how did you develop that personality? I don't have any idea. Yeah. I, my, the, one of the things that bugs me is, that, oh, there are no heroes today. And the fact is there are millions of heroes. All you have to do is go home and ask your dad how his day went. You're talking to a hero. That person goes to a job he may or may not even like. He works his butt off all day long, comes home so that he can feed you, so that he can put shoes on your feet. That's a hero. That person is a hero. So the greatest hero I ever had was my father. And he was probably the most honest. Every person is three people. Mm -hmm. The person you want to be, the person you really are, and the person people think you are. My father, those three were probably the closest of any person I've ever met. And so I try to be those three people. I try to make them as close as possible to one person as I can. Why I do that or how I came about that, I have no idea. I, I'm really smart. That sounds arrogant, but I was born with that. That had nothing to do with me. I have a really high IQ. I sit and listen to people talk, and I see what I believe are fallacies in their arguments, <laughs> and I point them out. And Really, people really don't like that. So do you think you're any close to, uh, to your father? Uh, I don't understand. Am I, if I'm one-tenth the man my father is, I'll be a success. Okay. My father died so years ago. You drive here now, or do you... I ride a motorcycle, yeah. Okay, now you ride a motorcycle? Because last year you didn't. Yeah, I didn't, and I got away from it. And yeah. I was getting further and further away from the motorcycle, and because I was spending so much time doing everything else, and I realized i got to get back. I am a biker. That's what I am more than anything else. I told her, when I met my wife and I, I told my wife, please don't ask me to choose between my motorcycles and you because I will miss you. Oh. And that's how I am. You cannot take my motorcycles away from me because it is so much a part of me that if you take it away, I'm not me anymore. 
And I was starting to get away from that, and so I'm getting back to it. Well, I know that you dropped out of college for a while. Mm -hmm. um, what inspired you to drop out of college? It was the 60s, man. That was, that's... It was, I had been, I would marched in protests about the Vietnam War. Um, I'd watched guys being pummeled by the police, by people being hosed um, with fire hoses, and I reacted negatively to that. I was very unhappy with the man, with the establishment, with um, authority. I was really unhappy with that. So I decided that going to college was simply preparing myself to be what I didn't want to be, to join what I felt was a corrupt system. So I dropped out of college to discover myself. I was going to travel around the country and, and my dad talked me into coming down and getting a job and saving up some money and the next thing I know I was back in college again. Um, what was the proudest moment in your life? Proud. I don't know that I could pick a proudest moment. I don't have much, I don't well, What are some of your favorite moments? The, the, the single most, the greatest epiphany in my life was when my son was born, when I held my son the very first time I put him in my arms. That was probably the most earth-shattering moment of my life. Mm -hmm. how, many, uh, how many kids do you have? None. I had one, but he decided he didn't want to pardon me, so I haven't seen him in six years. So at the moment, I have none. Okay. Would you explain your Diet Coke uh, obsession? <laughs> okay. Because that's a pretty well-known thing where you have to bring your... Uh... My Diet Coke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You drink how many, how, how many Diet Cokes do you drink a day? Well, I'm working on number six. I just finished six. And I'm cut down. Oh, I've okay. Down. So I'll have another probably five or six when I get home. So you're looking at 10 to 15 a day. Okay. Okay. So um, it, here's, here's the thing. Many years ago, the stupidest thing I've ever done, you've never asked me this, but the stupidest thing I've ever done was smoke. Uh -huh. It is the stup one of the stupidest things a person can do. I smoked. I got to the point where I was smoking four packs of cigarettes a day. Now, a person who smokes four packs of cigarettes a day always has a cigarette lit. The very first thing you do when you wake up in the morning is light a cigarette, and you are still smoking just before you go to bed, and you have a cigarette lit the entire time. That's, I don't know what, I don't know if there's such a thing as a, as a um, addictive personality. I don't know if there is. But if there is, I got it. And one of the reasons I don't drink or do any drugs whatsoever is because I might end up treating drugs the way I drink Diet Coke just too much of it. So I used to drink Dr. Pepper, but I was trying to lose weight, so I had to go to diet. So I forced myself to learn to like Diet Coke, and now I just, I'm always thirsty. I don't know. I'm always thirsty, so okay. I drink lots of Diet Coke. So to wrap this up, that's, uh, let's play a little game. Now the game in theory is supposed to uh, reveal more information about you subconsciously. So uh, I'm going to say a word. Um, and then <laughs> I'm gonna say a word, and then you're gonna word association. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna come with the first word that associates. Pops into my head. Yeah, I got it. Word so, association. Talk new guys. Study psychology. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's start with uh, less controversial words. So football. Stupid. <laughs> okay. Education. Really important. Taco. Jack in the box. Steve Jobs. Brilliant. Bill Gates. Thief. Math. Really important. Obama. Great president. Politics. Important. College. Important. <laughs> College. Fun. Uh, women. Um, <laughs> women. The reason to wake up in the morning. Okay. All right, and that's it's not it. A word, so. Okay, that's it. Thank you. All right, man. All right. <laughs>